I'm very happy to say uh, that the uh, the uh, cardiac program in uh, Baltimore uh, enjoys the extraordinary leadership of Dr. Joel Brenner at the uh, front table here uh, in pediatric cardiology and Dr. Uh, Luca Vercella uh, in cardiac surgery. Uh, as Luca was unable to be here uh, in person with us tonight, uh, he and our former chairman, uh, uh, Duke Cameron, prepared this uh, next five-minute video uh, on the subject of what they felt to be one of the truly great uh, innovations uh, in the history of our field that's had an enormous and lasting impact uh, on the patients to whom we dedicate our efforts. And so I'm pleased on behalf of the Hopkins folks and Luca in particular uh, to introduce uh, his video presentation. It is my privilege to say a few words about the undisputed father of infant heart transplantation, Dr. Leonard Bailey. This is a story of extraordinary determination, daring courage, and scientific innovation. The research and accomplishments of Dr. Bailey and his team at Loma Linda University ushered the field of neonatal heart transplantation, giving hope and restored health to infants with incurable congenital heart disease, a patient population that was absolutely hopeless before the mid-1980s. In 1967, Christian Barnard won the feverish race to perform the first human heart transplant. Although a groundbreaking and amazing accomplishment, the patient, Louis Woshansky, survived only 18 days. A few days later, Adrian Kantowitz performed the very first neonatal heart transplant. The recipient, a 19-day-old newborn with Epstein's anomaly, is seen here as he is cooled with topical hypothermia. The procedure was performed without cardiopulmonary bypass and the baby survived for only six hours. There is then a 16-year gap between 1967 and 1984, during which no one even attempts to perform a heart transplant in a baby. Magdi Yacoub in the summer of 1984, and now in the era of cyclosporin, attempts a heart transplant in a neonate. The baby unfortunately dies 18 days following the operation. Inspired by these amazing developments, Dr. Bailey visited Norman Shumway and his team at Stanford in 1968. This was a turning point in the life of the then third-year medical student from Loma Linda. Here we see Dr. Bailey and his wife Nancy when he was, only a few years later, a fellow at Sick Kids in Toronto. During that time, Dr. Bailey recalls being struck by the fact that all neonates with hypoplastic left heart syndrome died, as there was no intervention that could be offered. So when he returned to Loma Linda's faculty in 1976, he set up a lab that focused on neonatal heart transplantation. Starting with goats, he realized that neonates have a privileged response to transplantation, secondary to the immaturity of their immune system. Here we see mother and daughter goats who were both transplanted as neonates. These animals went on to live for months, even without cyclosporin. Dr. Bailey then went on to focus on primates and cross-species heart transplantation at a time in which neonatal organ donation was not existent. The stage was set. With two unsuccessful preceding attempts separated by 16 years, Dr. Bailey and his team performed the first neonatal baboon-to-human heart transplantation on baby Fay, the 2.3 kilogram baby with hypoplastic left heart syndrome we see in this picture. Baby Fay was doing well when she unexplainably succumbed to DIC. At 20 days she was, with the heart of a baboon, the neonatal recipient who since 1967 had survived the longest. The media was of course very quick and harsh in criticizing the Loma Linda team. Any one of us would have been so burned by all this, it would have in all likelihood stopped any effort to find a solution for these unfortunate babies. At the time of these events, Dr. Bailey received a telegram by Bill Norwood stating, Illegitimi non carborundum. Don't let the bastards get you down. And he certainly did not. His persistence and courage paid off. A year later, Dr. Bailey performed the first successful heart transplantation on baby Moses, who had hypoplastic left heart syndrome. That baby grew into a child and is still alive today with his original baby heart beating 31 years later. Following baby Moses, the team led by Dr. Bailey has gone to become the center with the largest worldwide experience with neonatal and pediatric heart transplantation. Baby Faye and Baby Moses has set the path forward 
for neonatal organ donation awareness and all that followed. 32 years after baby Faye and at almost 74 years young, Dr. Bailey still operates and takes care of children, a fantastic example of tireless dedication and passion for our work and mission as pediatric cardiac surgeons. Uh, we have the extraordinary privilege tonight of having amongst us uh, that wise, gentle, courageous, generous, uh, and skillful innovator. And uh, rather than asking a question uh, of Luca, uh, who can't be here, uh, I would just ask of the audience, how strongly do we feel uh, about the importance and the impact of Dr. Leonard Bailey's contributions?